situation. Yesterday, they acquired Alex Verdugo. Yes, he's going to have to shave. He's going to have to shave. Oh, man. He has one of the ugliest beards I've ever seen. Yeah, anyway. not a pretty person. It's not a nice. It's not a nice looking beard. A, a bit worse or better than the Pusick? I guess is the question. It's it's actually a a full Pusick. Yeah. Oh, it's one of those. It's that sort of beard. Yeah. It, it's kind of reddish. It, it it's a good move for him to be traded to the Yankees. Let's put it that way. It is, oh, this will help his. This life. is going to help. His him. wife is probably thrilled. I don't know Yay! if he's married, but anyway, we'll find out. <laughs> there are will. some issues with that. If the Yankees get Soto, mm-hmm. and it certainly looks like that's the way to bet, Brian. from everything that I'm hearing, you've got an outfield that's not a great defensive outfield. Because Verdugo, sound like a caller. Verdugo has not played center field for the last two years. And the last time he played center field, he had a minus seven defensive run save. So I think he played like 60 games. Okay. Soto, we know is one of the great hitters of all time. Not, not, not a, a great not a great defender. Right. So what worries me if all of these deals come down the way we think, you're gonna have to make a decision and possibly put judge in center field. Which I wouldn't want to do. I think that's asking too much of a six foot seven inch guy. But didn't they say they were willing to do that? Yes. And because because as a right fielder, Verdugo's very good. He has a good defensive metric in right field, also has a good arm. Judge is a very good center fielder, not as good as he's in right, but he's very good. And Soto's not a good left fielder, and especially at Yankee Stadium, that is exacerbated. Now, there's one aspect to the Soto deal that's come out today, where Joel Sherman of the New York Post is reporting that Trent Grisham is part of the deal. Okay. Which would solve a lot of problems, because Trent Grisham is an outstanding center fielder. Now, I don't know if the Yankees desperately want Trent Grisham, but the Padres are trying to dump as much salary as they possibly can. Grisham would come here as the fourth outfielder, and if the fourth outfielder takes over for Verdugo in the sixth, seventh inning of a close game, you solve some of your defensive worries. So that's that's the Verdugo part of it. There's also another angle with Verdugo that... Aaron Boone was asked about today. Okay. Verdugo was um, benched a couple of times by Alex Cora. Um, didn't think he played hard enough. Boone says he's not concerned about that. Okay. Well, why would you not be concerned about that unless it's just, hey, I, I, I can't do anything about it anyway, so I'm not concerned about it. Unless they did their due diligence. I, I have no idea. Oh. I have no idea, but I've heard from people, the guy likes to play. He doesn't strike out a lot, which is what the Yankees need. He's a left-handed bat. Uh, he doesn't have a high swing and miss percentage, which is also something that they need in that lineup. He's not a great player by any stretch of the imagination. He's not going to hit a, a truckload of home runs, but he's a serviceable player. But this is not the needle-moving move. The needle-moving move is Soto. Well, could could he be in the deal for Soto? He could be flipped. He could be. He could be flipped. Are you calling Don Flip? No, no. It could I be flipped. Flip, but it could be Flip. Got it. Now, here's Jeff Passan on SportsCenter, his reaction on the Verdugo trade. Getting Alex Verdugo, a guy who's been a productive big leaguer in the American League East for four years now with the Boston Red Sox, it's a good move, but it's not necessarily the one that Yankees fans wanted. Of course, they want Juan Soto. They want the guy who is the best left-handed hitting outfielder in baseball, who's one of the best hitters, period, in baseball, and they match up really well with the San Diego Padres and with Shohei Otani holding up the whole market at this point and Yoshinobu Yamamoto really doing the same. There's a chance that if some of the teams that are out of that sweepstakes jump in on Juan Soto, that the Yankees mm-hmm. could miss their opportunity. So there's a desire to get something done sooner than later. Now, that's a, a very important point. The teams that don't get Otani, and anybody who gets Otani is getting a hitter. They're not getting a pitcher this year. So if you're willing to spend $50 million a year on Otani, I don't think you're that worried about the $33 million that Soto is going to make this year. And the Yankees kind of have a little pressure. Let's get this deal done before Otani signs because the teams that don't get Otani might pivot to Soto. Mm. So when you finally see the package that the Yankees end up giving the Padres for Soto, you might be alarmed. As much as they don't want to give up Michael King, I think he's in the deal. Oh. Oh, 
my God, we're living in bizarro world. Now, they don't want to give up Drew Thorpe, who's a really highly thought of minor league pitcher, but I think he's going to be in the deal. They don't want to give up Vasquez and Brito, but I think they're going to be in the deal. So if you're a Yankee fan, should you be a little concerned at that large of a, a prospect package going to San Diego for Soto because it's just for one year? Yeah. But would they not have it cleared that Soto will be sticking around no, after the one year? Because he's he, he is he's t- represented oh, he's Boris, by Boris. So he's testing the market. And Boris wants his guys to go to free agency because then you have 30 teams bidding rather than one. So, wait, so how many people are you talking about potentially in this package? It could be it could be a seven player deal for one year. Yeah, I mean Grisham being it'd be two guys coming back to the Yankees, maybe five or six going back to them. And the Yankees, huh? I know, because they like King, don't want to include King, but they might have to to get this deal done before Otani signs. So it's it it's a tough call. The Yankees need this guy. They need to have a needle-moving move. Even if they get Yamamoto, I think that's a great signing for them. And and it looks like they could be one of the favorites. But getting Soto moves the needle. All of a sudden, you've got Judge Vatting second, Soto hitting third. Let me throw one thing. I'll let you go, Don. What about this thought, though? The, The Yankee fan base is impossible. Because they feel pressure from the fan base, like we need a right. star. Yeah. But then you know the Yankees have the smartest fan base in all of baseball. So you have this other fan base. You have this other half of the fan base who's going to kick and scream if the package is too big. Well, we're already hearing it now. Yeah, like already. Not a great defender. He got off to a slow start last the, year. He might just be a rental. They're damned if you do. See, the scary thing if I'm a Yankee fan are the Mets. Now the Mets are laying in the weeds. Doesn't look like they're going to be doing anything in 2024. All right, they're, 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 they'll try to be competitive, but they may not make a splash. Make a big splash. They're not in on Soto. They don't have the prospects. They're in on Yamamoto, but it's going to be tough to get him because everybody seems to be in on him. If they don't get Yamamoto, you're going to tell me that that Cohen's going to go from having the highest payroll in baseball to just like laying back. He might lay back for a year because he didn't get Yamamoto, and they can't compete for Soto. But what I'd be worried about if I'm a Yankee fan is next winter. Is he going to make it his business to now get Soto? This is the guy that apparently laid off making any offers for Judge. Remember, there was apparently this deal. I'm not going to get in the way of the Yankees re-signing Aaron Judge. Is this all part of the plan that, all right, let the Yankees trade for him. Let the Yankees have him in 2024. But then we're going to swoop in and we're going to offer big money. That would scare me, Michael, because there's no way that anybody can guarantee the Yankees are going to re-sign him. So this could be just a one-year rental and then have the uh, have the situation where the other team in town gobbles him up at the end of the season. Now, the only way it works out when you give up this much prospect collateral is if they win the World Series right. in 2024. Even if he leaves, okay. All right. Yeah. We've, we've seen World Series MVPs lead. Matsui did. So they would consider that prospect capital spent well. Mm-hmm. But Peter brings up a great point. He didn't articulate it that beautifully. Wait, what? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. What did if, I say? You said damned if they do. But they're also damned if they don't. If they well, that's, don't... It, it, that's such, you're such a bad guy. You don't have to say the whole phrase, do you, Don? Yeah. yeah. Well, everybody knows everybody, the phrase. I was just putting it out so there. So why don't you just go damned? <laughs> Well, wait a minute. I mean, let's, get, let's just cut words out. <laughs> that's, you knew what I was Other saying. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, you don't have to say how was the play. We all know. Oh, that's a gr- oh, you know, point guard. Don just got point guard. <laughs> well, these guys want to get out of the point way. Get but but my, my point is, if they don't trade for him, oh, all these prospects, none of them ever turn out to be anything. Now, if they do trade for him. Oh, are we getting rid of those uh, How could you get? Now, it, here's my concern with the package that is being rumored. And, and, and I'm hearing stuff like there could be physicals being done right now before it becomes official. Right. And you know what pictures, that could take a while. Right. But the Yankees have so many question marks in their rotation. Nestor Cortez had a bad shoulder last year. Is it resolved? A, a, bark, rest? a barky shoulder. Carlos Rodon missed half the season. And then when he pitched, he didn't pitch great. In fact, he pitched poorly. That's right. That's two guys in your rotation right away. So you got Cole, the Cy Young Award winner. Severino's gone. Your depth would be Brito and Vasquez. They're in the deal. King was going to be the third or fourth starter. He might be in the deal. So 
you've got to, uh, that leads me to believe the Yankees have to be pretty sure they're getting Yamamoto. Mm-hmm. They have to get another pitcher. Because you can't depend on Nestor Cortez. Well, and they'll need multiple pitchers, but you mean they'll need one stud. They need a, they'll need a number two. They 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 need a number two, and maybe they think that Rodon could be that guy. I don't know. Gee. I believe in Rodon more than Yankee fans do. I mean, the guy was too good for two years to just drop off the face of the earth for six. I know he was bad last year, but that guy has an arm. I think he could pitch well. Yamamoto would give them a little breath where they could go, okay, let's see how we fill out the bottom of the rotation, and we'll gamble on Cortez being okay. Clark Schmidt, second year being a full-time starter, gave them 32 starts. Now, I have said over and over, I don't want to give up King. But if you told me the difference between getting Soto is King. Goodbye, King. I got I to give up King. Peace, peace no. King. Because you know why? King's 29 years old. He has not pitched a full season as a starter. So even if he was in the Yankees starting rotation this year, he probably gives them 20 starts. He only gave them nine last year. He pits out of the bullpen the rest of the year. So you're not getting a full-fledged starter right away. And then he becomes a free agent. So I'm not letting, although I think he could be a great starter. That's how much I believe in this guy. I'm not letting that stand between me getting But that's how these monster packages in all sports become a problem. You end up looking at three players and you go, well, listen, I'm not going to let so-and-so get in the way. Right. And well, I'm not going to let so-and-so get in the way. Before you know, it's a six-player package because right. you're drooling over the fact that you have a I mean, superstar out there. And it'd be one thing if he had five more years left on his contract, the fact that he can walk after one year. And I understand what Michael's saying. You win the championship, then all's forgiven if you lose him. But there's no guarantee you're winning a championship. You know how hard it is to win it? You know, the best team doesn't always win. The most talented team doesn't always win. And Soto, last year, when he went to San Diego, got off to a bit of a slow start. Can you imagine if he gets off to a slow start here in New York for the first couple of months, where it might be his only year here, and how the media and the fans can get on him? I think he'll handle it, because he's he's, he's handled everything so far. But, God, the fact that it's a rental, you got to do it, Michael. But you're right. You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. If you don't do it, all oh, the Yankees came up short again. And if you do it, oh, you better re-sign him. But nobody can guarantee it. He's a Boris client. There's other teams that are rich, too, that are throwing money around. Unless, the, you know, the Yankees do the opposite of what they did with Judge. They just tell, I mean, that they, they're dead set on signing him. And they just sell Boris, oh, how much? And he, he throws out a number to go, okay. Because I don't think they're going to be allowed any kind of window to negotiate with him. And, and although you can't say every time, not every time, he has signed guys before they become free agents okay. for us. So if Soto wants to play in New York, wants to play for the Yankees, maybe tells right. him to get a deal right. done. I'm not sure, but that is an awful lot to give up for one year. But I do want to amplify to everybody listening, this guy is not good, Peter. Great? He's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. He's Hall of Fame great. I agree. Just look at his OPS and his OPS plus numbers. At the age of 25, he's in the top 10 of the greatest players of all time, what he's done so far. He he answers the bell every game, played in 162 games last year. Didn't have the best year, but that's a pretty good year no, that he had. That's not his best year. This is Boris's golden goose. This is the guy that we've been talking about that could really break the bank. Now, are they in position, Michael, if they get Yamamoto to be able to re-sign Soto? Or can they go, we'll give you whatever you want if you're paying Yamamoto all that money. You've got Judge under big money. You still have money left on Stanton's contract. Cole's making $36 million a year. Uh, is Are the Yankees, do they have the appetite to do that? They I don't know the they, have the, they, they have the money. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if they have the appetite. Right. I mean, that's a question for Hal Steinbrenner, but I mean, he's not flying into this blind. Well, but, he knows what Soto's going to cost. You, you, know the bath, you know the math better than me. You know, this, their owner, Hal, says you don't have to have a $300 million payroll. How, how do you avoid having a $300 million payroll if you're going to break the bank for Soto and for Yamamoto with the contracts you already have? Well, you, look at it this way. You, you're getting rid of $25 million from Donaldson. So that's off the books. Uh, they're probably they're probably losing some other money somewhere. So they're probably 30 million under what they so Soto is a wash. But, so what's Soto But adding cost Yamamoto, you? Uh, Yamamoto's mm-hmm. probably going to be 30 million a year. He's going to cost I mean, it looks like he's going to get close to what Derek Cole got. All right, so so that's 30 million dollars a year. You figure Soto's going to cost you 50. Co- Soto next year is 33. But but eventually, if you're yes. giving him that deal, and if and if Otani gets sixty, then that's what Boris is going to start with. All right, so let's just say for sake of argument, it's, that's that's eighty million dollars for just two players there. Yeah, and then you got Judge at how much a year? 40. 30, 30, uh, 40. 40. and then you have thirty six for Cole. I mean, that's 
And then, and was it twenty? You have ninety-eight million for four years for for Stan. I mean, that's you're, a lot of money. You get you're getting close, right? That's that's close to uh, what is it like one hundred and seventy million dollars for four players? And you got to round out the rest. As you said, there are still some holes. Even if you go out and get Yamamoto, there's still other you know guys that you have to pay in that rotation. And then you've got uh, the rest of the team still. I mean, so. You're getting dangerously close to a three hundred million dollar payroll at some point during the length of these contracts. Yeah, it's it, it's a lot of money. It, it's a lot of money, but the Yankees go eighty two and eight. Well, the last time they didn't make the playoffs and spent a lot of money, two thousand eight, and they spent all that money and they won a World Series in two thousand nine. Mm-hmm. So that's probably their their plan right now. Let's spend for Yamamoto and Soto, and then you know if we lose Soto after one year, we lose him. Game time brought to you by Tell 